Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Heyer from Extra Marks Education, your facilitator for the session. It's my utmost pleasure to extend a warm welcome to each one of you to our esteemed webinar series, Extra Marks Elevate. Extra Marks Elevate stands as a beacon of thought leadership, providing a platform for educators, administrators, and stakeholders to share their insights and experiences in the realms of education and technology. With a rich legacy spanning over 15 years, Extra Marks Education has been at the forefront of revolutionizing education, catering to the dynamic needs of 21st century learners through innovative technological solutions in collaboration with over 15,000 schools globally. We have constantly been re-engineering and upgrading to the needs and have come up with a unique technology frameworks in the pedagogy. We have tried creating an ecosystem so that all the stakeholders of the school are on the same page and whatever efforts the schools are making in transitioning and adopting to NEP will be seen tangibly by all the stakeholders due to the robust platforms we have architectured for the school ecosystem. We are constantly learning and unlearning to give most effective solutions and therefore we reach out to academic practitioners and take their inputs regarding what are the unique ideas they are following to implement and also how it can be implemented better. As we embark on the 16th episode of this esteemed series, we are privileged to have the host and esteemed panel of experts who will delve deep into the topic of Schooling 2.0, SQAAF, NEP, and shaping the future of school education. Allow me to introduce our distinguished panelists for today's discussion. Mr. Surajit Sen, principal of Jharkhand Public School. He has an extensive experience as a CBSC, CBSC master trainer and resource person selected by CBSC in 2021 among 150 principals nationwide. Sir brings expertise in pedagogical leadership and a commitment to simplicity in education. Sir, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining. And next we have Mr. Vikas Vasisht, Vice Principal of Modern School Faridabad, a mathematics postgraduate with over 16 years of teaching and administrative experience in leading Indian schools. He specializes in school projects from inception to full operation. With expertise in CBSC teacher training since 2010, 20, sorry, 2020, his passion for education keeps him grounded as a lifelong teacher. And also we have, sir, thank you so much. Really appreciate your presence here. And also we have Ms. Pail Batra, Director of Administration of JBM Global School, Noida, an esteemed academician with over 26 years of experience dedicated to student welfare and educational advancement. Her leadership shapes policies and cultivates optimal learning environments. Her passion, expertise, and commitment make her an invaluable asset to any educational institution. Ma'am, we welcome you. Thank you. Um, last but not the least, we have with us our director of Extra Marks Education, Ms. Poonam Singh Jamwal, who has always believed in inclusive, intuitive, and holistic tech-enabled learning solutions. We have been happy to have her with Extra Mark since 2007. Our panelists bring with them a wealth of experience and expertise in the wealth of education. And we are honored to have them share their insights with us today. Dear panelists, welcome to the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Welcome, ma'am. Um, now, let's delve into the heart of our discussion with a series of thought-provoking questions. So maybe I would like to start off with Pail, ma'am. I would like to start with you, please. Sure. Thank you. Ma'am, could you provide a concise overview of SQAF, which is an acronym of School Quality Assessment and Accreditation Framework, and NEP, 
and discuss their impact on the school education, please. Sure. As you have correctly told, that school quality assessment and framework, which was uh, firstly uh, done up by Quada Global Teachers Prize. So their structure approach is doing a wonderful job for all the schools, for the curriculum, for the stakeholders to understand that what and how things should be. Because as we say that checks and balances are required in all the forms, in all the fields. So you may have NEP, you may have further an NEP, but till that time we know whether it is being implemented or not, it is of no use. Because uh, like we, we do have insights on NEP, but their implement implementation in the school, in the format which it is required, that is what where the SQAF stands. Their framework, like very, very categorically, they gave us a roadmap to go ahead. Uh, and it's not only the best part is it's not only for the teachers or not only for the curriculum. They give it for all round. Uh, the the school curriculum, how you are going ahead with the text, how because like it is very important for the entire team of a school to understand what is best for their students. In today's world where like education is also you know, taking a shape of any other industry, it is very important for us as teachers, as educationists to know that for what we are in the society. And that is where I think SQAF is giving us the roadmap to go ahead with it. That's what will be my opening statement. Let's go ahead. Absolutely. Very wonderfully said, ma'am. That's absolutely right. I would also like to know a few more insights from others as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Vikas, sir, maybe please go with you. Yes, sir. As ma'am has already mentioned, so SQAF gives us you know, basic idea Earlier, like NEPs were there, we have like uh, circulars and everything coming from CBSE time to time. But SCOF covers all the seven areas covering the curricular, then infrastructure, and even resources, resources, inclusive practice, management, governance, leadership, everything. And in that, all these 49 domains are given where each and every part of the school life is covered. So everything is mentioned in that. And if we as a school administrator go through it, we can self-check ourselves, like where we are standing. So that is the best part of the scope which we are liking because we were needing a certain framework where all the categories, where uh, what is happening in the school life and where we can improve ourselves and where we are standing today in that, that was required. So that CBSC has fulfilled through scope. So it's really a great uh, framework, which will be helping school leaders and everyone, those who are uh, in the education field. Yes, sir. Uh, I completely. Yes, ma'am, please. No, no, I was just agreeing with him that absolutely this is, uh, this is a very, very important thing which was required. Correct. Because till the time we do not know that on what yardstick we have to, you know, check things. Correct. It is at times difficult for such institutes who are not equipped with very, uh, you no know, educated people. Because like a country like India, where like schools are there in all fields, we cannot only talk about urban cities. We have to, you know, take care of the schools which are in small towns and in smaller places where at times we do not have the people who are equipped with all the knowledge of the things to be checked upon. Right. So that uh, SQF plays a very important role. Absolutely, ma'am. What you said is absolutely right, especially for the three tier cities and much lower uh, category cities, it's definitely needed because that's what is a guiding path and it treads a path for them of how to maintain quality. Absolutely. That's true, ma'am, absolutely. Um, we'll go with Surajit sir. sir. I would like to know the same from you also with the same question. Could you please throw us shed some light regarding the same? Sir, you're on mute. Kindly, could you please unmute, sir? Sir? Sir, we can't hear you. Sir, please maybe request you to unmute and talk, sir. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Uh, Am I audible can... right now? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. Okay. So once again, good evening to all of you out there. Good evening, Payal, ma'am. Good evening, Poonam, madam. Good evening, Vikas, sir. And of course, John, good evening to you. Evening, the sir. way you started, it was a boom, I'll say. Wait. Okay. That we are discussing today about. Now, this is not something new. You know, as far as I remember, uh, it all started somewhere in 2013, 2012 or 13, when CBSA actually started with this particular program to find out what exactly is happening in the schools and to get information from the schools, what exactly they are doing. Uh, at that time, it was called like what you call the schools quality assessment and accreditation. But now they have changed the word. Okay, instead of accreditation, now they are calling it assessment and assurance. If you take the word accreditation, it is more of a formal word. Okay, it's like okay, for the sake of doing it, you are doing something. But when you call it assurance, means you are coming out from your heart. You know, you are telling from your heart and say exactly this is what we are doing. And it is the moral and social duty of each and every educational institution to go out in the public domain and tell them exactly what is happening in their schools, what quality they are following, what are the things they are doing, what type of stakeholders they are associated with, how much time and how much they are giving to the pedagogy, to the teaching learning process and the assessment compared to the other things like, say, for example, the infrastructure, the human resources, the beneficiary effects and all. So it is very important that we should come to the public domain. Now you have to disclose, you have to be very transparent. Then only education will go forward. If you take with that with NEP, now this, uh, this uh, school quality assessment started 2013, okay, somewhere in 2013. And if you see, still see the things, they are all, whatever is there, little bit of modification here and there they have done. So somewhere with this is associated NEP 2020 also. NEP 2020 work started somewhere around 2015 or 16 as far as I remember, because during those days we used to get information from CBSC and NCRT on various ways in form of circulars and they were asking us to give us information what should be done for uh, for bringing a change in the education. So certain things were taken from here also. If you if you look at it, if you can join it, that's what I have also found. In. So NEP 2020 is now very transparent. No, it is a landmark judgment. NEP 2020 will get changed into something else also because the dynamics of the world changes so the system also changes so NEP 2020 but the formation of this quality assurance that is something unique you know each and everything it is for the students it is for the teachers it is for the school uh, principals school leaders whoever is assured and everybody has to come out and give the information what is exactly happening and that is what you should know then only school will develop Huh. the assessment will be done what are your limitations they will be gradually dictated and those limitations will be removed so that new things can be added in the beginning you said no something about learning unlearning and relearning well i agree with alvin topless those words okay we in the process no because life is about change no there's a saying in english that it says that change with the change otherwise the change will change you so you have to move with the change you have to see what is happening you implement those things and come out with beautiful bright ideas then education learning will be wonderful like it's all that's what it's all about. Thank you. Sir, I would like to compliment you, Mr. Sen. It was <laughs> wonderful hearing you. And yeah. I, really, I really see the speed at this uh, age and at this position. <laughs> we, we, we go so slow and we want to make to everybody okay. understand. But probably the knowledge is so much that it was coming up quickly. I, interestingly, I Thank always you, feel that uh, experience, yes. <laughs> But also our ability to connect dots gives a synergistic outcome, you know, uh, because end of the day, you know, so what is so unique about NEP this time, that this is the most discussed NEP. Right. And this is most discussed NEP because of technology. This NEP was outcome of those last 10 years work in uh, education, the discussions or feedback or whatever was coming up, but that was always sent through circulars and feedbacks were not instant. And the feedbacks were so many, but they were not culled out or discussed through. This time NEP for the last two years is discussed at every forum, every uh, classroom, everywhere, threadbare. And then by the practitioners who are saying, okay, you're telling me NEP, let me go and implement. No, this is failing. Why not another way? So as they discussed, they implemented. So today I feel 
when you have squaff today, squaff has actually come out of implementation and plowing back at a very short, just in time. And that is because we had online forums, we had trackers, we had ways to be able to cull out the best practice. Until now, we were do doing our, our own interpretation, our own instinct to best of our capacity. And every uh, feedback that went was more like a formality to fulfill a certain standard. Now, what because of technology, what we it's just a tip of an iceberg, but we are going to capture trends, impact, outcome, change. So the change will start happening like that. The, when NEP was being discussed, first everybody thought, let's discuss the spirit of it. Okay. Then they went into the obvious. We have to introduce dance, music, everything, technology into education. So every chapter should have it. You know how your mind evolves itself? And then they say, how can every chapter have everything? No, the interpretation is that is also a way to effectively teach a chapter because your outcome is more important than action. But you have been freed of using any tool towards that outcome. So, so the, I, I think last one year where any NEP is concerned has been such a wonderfully collaborative movement that today's COF makes sense to all the practitioners. It is not an external document. It is actually a help to implement what they understand. So, so uh, I, I really feel so, and I uh, genuinely, genuinely feel intent of an educator and a policy maker was there. Technology has helped us connect the dots. Correct. So that's, yes, definitely. That's true, ma'am. That's true. Ma'am, thank you so much for the insight, ma'am. That's a different nuance to and continuation to what sir has said. Thank you so much, Puna, ma'am. Sir, I am totally awestruck with the conviction you have towards this framework. I would like to be, I would like to start this with you, sir. I would like to start this question with you. Sir, you have been very rightly said, sir. This is something which was started way back in 2013. It's just that it has become more concrete now. Otherwise, it was already existing. So, sir, let me please ask you, how has the implementation of SCOF impacted your school's educational practices and standards? Could you briefly talk about that, sir? Right. Uh, see, uh, John, actually, to be very honest with you, uh, when we started this current session, which is about to end in a few days, when you started, we were not very serious about SCOF. Uh, in fact, I was not very serious about it. I was very busy with rest of the things of doing in the school. But, you know, uh, this was there in my mind that if not today, tomorrow, if not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I have to give a reply, I have to give an answer to CBSC that what exactly is happening in my school. So initially, I didn't do anything. But after the session started rolling out, then say from the month of April, I didn't do anything. May, of course, there's a, you have summer vacation. From June onwards, we started in a very small way. And I did not take care of rest of the things. I was very much involved with the curriculum, with the pedagogy, because that is the most important part of it and the teaching learning process. So we have a planning. Okay, like I make a planning for this. Like, okay, the, the primary section will go in this way. The secondary section will go in the, and the higher secondary section will go. And we all make, you know, we keep the records. What exactly the teacher is doing in the classroom? Huh, that lesson plan and all those records are there. But the small, small test that we conduct, the achievement test we conduct. Okay, for that we keep a very big record of it. Okay, right. Exactly what is the what are the marks received? What is the range of marks? What type of questions were made? Were they really relevant for that particular test or not? So these records, all my teachers are keeping and they are maintaining it. So this plays a very vital role in developing the pedagogy as well as <coughs> the curriculum and the teaching learning process. I played very big role over 
here also as a moderator, as a school leader, I helped them out. They did the things properly and they went, and the records we have. So now the record is ready by 31st. I will send it to CBSE that this much we have done. Rest of the things, I have not done too much, to be very honest with you. I need to do, say, for the example, the infrastructure, a little bit of development in the human resources I have done by conducting the CBP programs, some training programs I conduct by myself. I take the help of other experts from the various schools because that is also what we need. Okay, so that we get variety of ideas. But this part I'm still working on. The other part, the 40% stake which has to be given, that I have already done it and I'll send it. So this is how it is gone and definitely it has been it has done a big impact in my school. The teachers have learned. They have got that confidence to do things. Those teachers who are not very confident why they are asking these questions or why they are taking, now they are getting that. Yes, sir, we understand. Okay, so this much the child is scoring. I'm very happy. This much is the progress. This is the goal I kept. I did not reach up to that level, but somewhere near to it. So these small, small things, now they have helped to push the morality of the teachers also and the students and definitely the parents also get happy. So that's how we are not doing it. Okay, so this is the process I'm following in my school. One little intervention so so were very uh, important points uh, said that because there was also a thing self test yes. everybody by creating a benchmark is testing themselves against a benchmark so you don't have right. to externally test a teacher or the student there right. are standards and everybody knows I'm moving towards that standard that itself gives the ownership to min collective ownership to reach a standard yeah. otherwise uh, when we judge a teachers or outcome and all we have a very outside inside view it, by the nature of it it has inside outward view and that, therefore it has greater sustainability in its nature so that's a very interesting point the fact that the slow teacher also said i know sir where i want to go right exactly true <laughs> Very good. Thanks so much, ma'am. Self-test is a very important word in this entire conversation, even I feel, because SCOF is all about, it starts from self-test and self-assessment. That's where and how we could enhance the quality. It starts from the teacher and then it goes to the student and to the entire organization as well. Very nice. Sir, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. This is actually quite a little interesting question to me because as we've already discussed, this is something which was already there since 2013. It's just that it got more concrete over the last few years. I would, I'm very inquisitive to know what Payal, ma'am, and also Vikasa says about this. So Payal, ma'am, the same question, please. Yeah. How so, has the implementation of SCOF impacted your school's education practices? Uh, as both our colleagues have brought it out, I would like to take it slightly away from uh, the deep discussion to a lighter note that I would like to draw parallels from uh, anybody who's overweight and who's working hard to get into shape. So now there were so many questions what to eat, what not to eat, what to do, what workout, when to sleep. So similar is SCOF for schools today. So Joe, uh, th there was an ambiguity somewhere, not to all, but to few. The ambiguities were there. But with this written document, written structured thing, those ambiguities are slowly going up. At least the senior people are very, very amply clear that how they have to guide their teachers, their faculties, how to move slowly to ga uh, gain their goal. So that is what it is doing wonders in our uh, institution, especially if I talk about my JBM Global School. So now, they, like nobody is looking at anybody what to do. It is clear what to do, how to do, what is expected, and what is the time goal also to achieve it. Mm. So I, I have you no, know, uh, I am totally in love with this uh, full thing. So that yeah. is what is my take on it. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Vikas, sir, could we please hear from you yeah. also? Please. So when, uh, like, uh, in 2023, when CBSE asked every school to fill the scope, so my principal ma'am gave this work to me, and she told, okay, first you go through all the standards and domains, subdomain and everything, and honestly check where our school is lacking. Like, even our school is 45 years old, but she told, Okay, do across the full check and then see what we are doing and what exactly we are not doing. So then we got a like three, four page report, which we are not doing right now because the standards to meet you know, international global standards, there are so many good things which are given into the scope that if you do this, this, this. So like level four, if we want to say, 
to achieve that level there are many things where we as a school need to work so what we did ma'am told okay in one year is not possible to cover all the things as sir also mentioned practically not possible so what we did we selected few points like for example one was the major thing teachers training because if we want to bring the change into our system then change makers are teachers only if they are well trained then only they will be doing it so we found that few issues were there with the teachers first was like their uh, pedagogy because cbsc is asking or even scoff and nep is telling about storytelling art integration interdisciplinary so many things are there so then we had one workshop from coe related to learning outcome and pedagogies then we found that you know, assessment pattern is also parallelly cbsc is evolving very fast where teachers are not able to cope up so then we had a two days training related to the latest assessment patterns so in this way then few things we did with our infrastructure as well like uh, related to this green greenery and how to do the waste management even that also scoff tells so we took that area also and one interesting point i want to say in the scoff it is written about the alumni also so this year january uh, in this uh, january 26 of 20, uh, 24 we had our first alumni meet because of scrap only in this 45 years because it was written there so then we started it from november got the contact of all the alumni and then we decided one date that okay this uh, republic day would be fine because everybody will be coming so in this way a great help this scoff has been to us and there are many other parameters where we have to work so that during like down in the line we will be working on those points and definitely we this scoff has help us to get the our standard high i i also feel that scoff allowed us to um, actually uh, uh, open our eyes to the possibility within the same time frame you know you, you have a time frame of 220 days your school runs for a certain time how you optimize for greater outcome some things we kind of don't take it into consider like alumni meet mm. now alumni is such a powerful emotional support because all of us have such memories of school so even if you have a person very accomplished person you pick up a phone and say that why don't you come and address my assembly and he would leave everything and come because his connection with you is way over and above any connection he may have created and it's a powerful continuous resource right and then to and but you don't disrupt your program you do run your school how you want to but within that empower it so these eyes open for us some schools have implemented it so we pull all that but the fulcrum the way um, uh, uh, sensor said he focused first on curriculum that's the heart that's why we do it uh, whatever we do so if we get the main nucleus right one can work with the electrons towards that but first the nucleus needs to be in place and on a daily calculable way right so i think in the first year 80% of effort goes into the core uh, thing one is curriculum then competencies around the curriculum that's why teachers training and then you pick up other elements that will energize the the center but the center has to start taking 20% of your time it has to go on a auto gear and only way it can go on the auto gear is if you leverage technology frameworks once you've created a framework you've handed it over you should try taking the manual out of it to bring efficiencies you should be able to give analysis sheets to the teachers for their better judgments the manual your most precious part of your transition sir is time so you might have a thought process in your room then you have to translate it to the last teacher and if you can put it on a framework it is more effective uh, sometimes all of us are simultaneously working on the same document 
while when we are doing it manually, though so many man hours are taken. So it is very important to be able to identify. And another thing about this framework is everybody is connected. True. Otherwise, all the great work you guys were doing, were doing in your school, four walls. Everybody else was blind to what you were doing, whether community or parents, or they'll only come to your PTA and know whatever you tell. Here, the transparency is the biggest power. You, We might feel vulnerable initially, but it is end of the day empowering. So, so I, I think we... Technology for the implementation purpose is critical. It is not can be. It is critical. So that you can move to all the other elements of... Otherwise, you will always be playing catch-up. This is a very strong feeling for me that if you adopt good connected platform, which is robust and supported, your outcomes will be mapped auto and then you can bring the energizers in, is how I see a SCOF implementation. Because uh, in 2013, when they sent it, everybody implemented the way they wanted to. Send in the reports, but there was no comparative mm -hmm. analysis. Now we can exactly. have comparative That's... analysis. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's quite a lot of light on how technology could enable frameworks like this to make the school function more effective. I absolutely concur to that. Sir, uh, coming back to you, Vikas, sir. Yes. Yours was actually a very interesting story. The transition and the different stages your school has gone through, that curve was quite interesting. This actually asked me a question. Sir, um, can you share any challenges or successes your school has experienced while you were aligning with SQUAF and NEP objectives? Yeah, so success already, like we have discussed that uh, whatever guidelines were there in the SQUAF, so we are trying to implement. Some we have implemented and some will be implemented in the next coming years. Uh, related to challenge, if we see, so at one time, uh, you know, it's, it's a juggling because so many fields, we found that we have to work and the time is very less. So that is one challenge which we are finding because uh, to reach to the level four and there are some areas where we are still at the level one, like we are in the, the beginner stage. So, and SCOF is asking about policy making. If you see to reach to the level four in every subdomain, they are asking whether you have documented the policy or not for so and so subdomain. So, everything getting documented. So as ma'am said, once it becomes documented, the process will go on auto mode. Then you simply have to uh, revive year by year, a little, little bit of uh, things here and there. And the system will take care of the entire school or education system. So there we are finding it challenging that how we will be bringing everything into the document form. And that document should be in the mind of all the stakeholders. Because it's not about principal or management only. It should be with the teachers also because they have to work. It should be with the parents because the child is going at home only after the school. So the, this is only we are finding it challenging. Uh, maybe after two years, three years or in the sometime we will be preparing all the documents for that. And then it, the system will go on the auto. Definitely. Correct, sir. Such frameworks which are brought in place definitely takes time and especially Adapting to change is one aspect which is quite critical. Thank you so much, sir. Very, very well said. Uh, Pail, ma'am, I have a question for you, please. Yes. How do you ensure educators in your institution are empowered to drive positive change in education quality? Uh, it's a very wide thing. But yes, as uh, seniors in any school, we have to ensure that it is happening. So one is observation. Very closely observations are done, class observations, because you may ask anything to be done. You may get all the reports, but what actually is happening in the class can only be known by two ways. One is close observation and one is outcome in the format, in the form of your students learning. 
So students learning, yes, there are very, um, there are many ways that you find out by their report cards, by their annual day performances, by performances in co-curricular activity. But when it comes to teacher per se, I personally feel and I have observed it that the close class observation and feedback, these are the two important tools which have worked for me always. When, when you tell people that how to go about even for the small things like class control, how you look at the students, what is uh, uh, no, required from students to give uh, you back, because always it is not required, for example, how to you know, uh, take control of a class in a minute or two after you enter, after one teacher goes and another teacher comes. So there is always a quite a bit of commotion in the classroom. Now, when uh, the new teachers and sometimes even the older ones also, they keep on telling students, please keep quiet, please keep quiet, this doesn't work. Then you closely tell them that you just fold your hands and with starey eyes, look at them for 30 seconds and you will find everybody say, look, look, ma'am is looking at us. You have taught a very important concept to that teacher, how to deal with the class control, because the basic starts from here. So it is very important that the leadership, governance, this dimension focuses on effectiveness of school leadership. And till the time, yes, ma'am. No, no, I coughed, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no. So it is very important for the seniors to observe the classes and to give immediate feedback to the teachers. Because till the time things are you know, clean, neat, and sufficient at grassroots level, we may talk anything, anywhere. So that is my take on it. Very so nice. I, I have a question on this only. That yes, uh, to be able to, a uh, lot of times when we monitor them or observe them, they're always on a guard. So the, ultimately, the leadership you're talking about is collaborative improvement is what you're talking about, right? Right. So, and that element cannot be in a policy or a paper. It is one uh, person to person contact to uh, improve and be uh, motivated, right? So my question, the reason I'm, uh, I um, wanted to do a follow-up question, in that, do you create any kind of, one is supporting, but are, are you creating some kind of benchmarks within your school? How do yes. you it and how do you judge an improvement in that? Right, ma'am. We have observation sheets with various uh, uh, no criteria in that which are to be checked when we go for an observation class okay. and there is a mark scheme also in which we give marks on a count of 10. Okay. The same teacher will be observed three to four times in a year. So that very well tells that we are checking that teacher on the same parameters and after first observation itself she was given sufficient feedback if improvement was required. And if it was good, then she was appreciated for the same so that that can be continued. And that's yes. how after second or third uh, observation, we are very clear that in which direction she or he is going. So how do you document it? Is the report transparently available to the teacher also? Yes, ma'am. Because she signs, we sign. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair, fair okay. enough. Yes, sir. How, how is it that you keep your teachers motivated for this transition or improvement? Uh, Mr. Sen, I yeah, just... Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, madam, see, I am associated with the school for a long time. Okay. I am associated with the school for a long time. I've been working with the same teachers for a long time. And definitely, I have formed my group of core teachers who are actually helping me in the process. Now, we have a lot of transparency over here, not, not any type of hostile uh, monitoring or this or that. No, a very simple way we go for with the teaching learning process. And of course, we have certain benchmarks and we make teachers to understand that this is your goal, this you should achieve. Okay, see how much you can go up to it. If you cannot reach it, okay, no issue, we'll go for the next one. But the feedback is essential. You know, the feedback today and the data maintenance or data interpretation, what you call 21st century is the century for data. You keep the record records, you maintain the record, then the level of transparency will be much more clear. You know, from that opaque layer, it comes to that clear layer. This is what we are doing. We give them the freedom. 
we give them the freedom you use your expertise whenever my help is needed you come to me we have this midweek meetings midweek you know like say for monday tuesday wednesday till wednesday we will have classes in wednesday before the school is over we have a one hour meeting or a 45 minute in which we just simply discuss what exactly is happening in what are the problems they are finding are they writing that writing down work what are those things so that we can go for a rectification of them so in this way we are going and initially of course well some challenges were there some of the teachers could not understand some you know three four will always be there they will always be there to give in a different way the interpretations uh, always they will try to play that smart uh, smart system of doing their things but then you know experience and all these things are also very essential for a principal to find out where exactly because i have also passed out through that situation you know so obviously we can get all these things so anyway this uh, this mixtures will always be there but at the end of the day what happens you know we get a concrete result that okay 75 is the achievement 65 is the achievement i targeted this much sir but i could not i hope i'll do and find out where the children are making the mistake if a same mistake is made by a lot many number of children that means in my teaching learning process there is something wrong i have to rectify myself what madam puna madam said in the beginning that it is for the teachers to find out to reflect themselves where i am standing and that is the first thing that they are doing it and i'm asking you there is nothing wrong in it there is nothing to feel bad about it because you know in the process when you are growing, you have to see what are the mistakes you are making from there so in this way we are going with it our school is doing very well in this and we are getting appreciations also from the parents side that that is very important that is what because recently before the examination we had a parent teacher meeting and where we placed everything and we have this fortnightly reports also where everything in detail about the child is given so that's how the the parents go out with satisfaction and that gives our satisfaction i hope we are moving in the right direction but a lot of work needs to be done it cannot be done in one at one one go or in a two go maybe a few more takes we have to take but well the future is created huh? let's see how bright it will be for the next session that's what we are all thinking so john i'm asking the last question okay Please, then you can take on because me, i'm very curious about uh, me too um, it's very interesting of, uh, this yes uh, well, so the framework gives us benchmark we test we tell them to self assess and move upwards and and we have become like at school leaders become mentors so that they do not think that they are judged but keep the environment happy and positive that towards because teachers for whatever are, will be overwhelmed everything has to be done by them so as we ease the process it is very very important for us where um, uh, mr vikas is scope yes. for innovation or innovativeness because we are running towards documentation framework catch the bus and and that teacher who wants to just sit back and say today i want to explain air in a different manner but oh my god i have to do objectives and outcomes and testing so how do you will you strike that balance is a point do you have a, a score for this or are you factoring it in or you need to factor it in i don't know how that part works uh, yeah right as far as like this uh, innovation in the teaching learning process it is mandatory it is required because we we all need to update ourselves so what we have done is like as i mentioned first we uh, as pal mam also mentioned its class observation is necessary that is the route from where we can come to know where actually the problem is lying and then if there is any issue because different teachers will be having different kind of issues some may have with the pedagogy some may have with the discipline some may have with any other thing so hand holding of the teachers is required first thing is like instead of like uh, criticizing them creatively like uh, critically if we will tell them in a positive way that these are the things where we have found that uh, these things were missing in your in our class observation and if you work upon these things your class would be much better so this is the one thing and what i have observed is most teachers they take it as a positive feedback and then they work it for the next time and then after two months one month whenever we are getting a chance to go again into the classroom we are finding the teacher has worked on the parameters or the suggestions which we have given to them then we have like uh, generally we tell them if there are two or three science teachers it's better if the other teacher your co teacher is free 
take that, ask that teacher to come into your class because the teacher belongs to that particular subject only. That teacher can give more insight that how the lesson could have been organized. And then in our lesson plan, in the end, we are having the reflection also. Like what went well, how I could have delivered this lesson plan in a more better way. Then we have one uh, email also, which we have created where teachers without like, uh, think uh, being judged, they can simply drop their suggestions, whatever they have for the betterment of the school system. Because there are few things which being in this side of the table, we are not able to recognize. Maybe the teachers are under more clerical work, whereas some teachers, they want to teach more, but they are stuck with the result making, this making, that making. So if they are providing us suggestions, so we have told them, you need not to write your name. Simply you drop the mail, we'll go through it. And we are thankful to our management. Every month we are discussing on those issues also, like whatever Good teachers point. are facing. And Very wherever fine. possibility is there, so because it's not possible to implement all the suggestions which are coming from the teachers, some are uh, next to impossible, but wherever possibility is there, we try to make the system in such a way which is teachers friendly, because those are the one who will be bringing the change into the system. Absolutely. We are the policy maker, but implementation lies with the teachers only. So in this way, we try to have like teachers innovation at the place. That if you have some good suggestion, then we have micro teaching where uh, English teachers, suppose they are there. So all English teachers will be assembling at one place, one by one, like their roster is given. So other teachers, they will be assessing the teacher who is teaching and then they will be coming up with the ideas. Like that particular topic, how I will be teaching, how you will be teaching, how she will be teaching. So for one topic, there can be multiple ideas. And generally we choose those topics which will be coming in the next week or in the next month. So that other, other teachers can also come or they can give a second thought to their lesson plan that how I can modify our lesson plan. So these are the ways where we... Oh, no, very nice, very, very collaborative and very open-ended. And then that will give us agility into improvement and everything. Then every the, the ownership I was talking about, we may have great ideas, but imagine NEP has to move a mass. So obviously you have to set benchmarks, you have to set involvement. But I sometimes feel uh, sparklers of positive reiteration within the system are very interesting. That you say, even if you're having this collaborative meeting and everybody go, aha, for an idea. And that, that point of time just gets a batch, which is not measured through the year. But to add that, elevate that moment of collaboration because it gets people to think for the next meeting that will I get that toffee or will I get that chocolate even for an adult? You know how human mind is for always solving problems or doing something nice. So, so I really feel that when we are doing this benchmarking, the little celebratory things will uh, create a positive behavior. You know, it moves people, people to a particular behavior and adoption because we shouldn't lose out on innovation uh, granularly when it comes to teaching and learning. So um, that was one input. And over to you, John. But I'm very so curious about the human factor. So yes, that's why I asked the question. Yes, so yes, here, I would like to add this, ma'am. Like in our school, we have a beautiful practice of Star Teacher Award. And we do it monthly. Okay. And it really helps us to get best out of them. Like yeah. the question which started that how to add innovation. So that award is for the people who along with all other tasks are doing innovation as well. True, true. See, so they that, that have true. time or they do not have time, they get, you know, yeah. get that award. Because ultimately, sir, the main aim that by EdTech, I am such an evangelist when it comes to EdTech, you have a best practice, you put it in a framework, you reduce the time, you create a scope for new innovation. 
within the same time, you keep improving and challenging people. Otherwise, people get very bogged down by the, you know, basics which can be optimized. And always it happens. Then in a team of 20, 40, you will find two, three superstars. Yes. They will do and yes, others yes. will follow. And they become leaders. So leaders are not really in the rooms that we are sitting. We have Absolutely. to create leadership at every level. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yes, over to you, John. I have had my piece. <laughs> no, ma'am. Thank you so much. This was interesting. This was very interesting. It was nice listening <laughs> to mm -hmm. all, uh, all of y'all. Great. So, um, John, uh, yeah. if you allow me, John, uh, yeah. if you allow me, if you with your permission, yeah. please, 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 uh, more than I will. Can, I would like to continue the same prospect, but Madam has just now said, you know, Madam has said, and uh, uh, because uh, see, teachers, they are the main backbones of the school that we have to keep it. They are like the heart and soul. Okay, we principal school leaders, we are there helping, but they are the backbones, and they are the ones who are doing everything. So definitely, this weekly or monthly or fortnightly rewards and awards definitely boost up their morality. They get much more attention towards the school. They go on doing better things. And this is happening in almost in all the schools. Everywhere it is practiced because this is some some sort of thing should be done. Otherwise, why that person will get that, from where he will get that extra stamina to do the things no, from these. So it is it is a good practice ever even in my school also I'm doing it. We have it on a fortnight basis. Some do it on a weekly basis. Some do it in a monthly basis. I, I'm doing it in a, in a fortly, fortnightly basis because we get a fortnight report. We prepare a fortnight report, which I said we have a form for that we prepare it and the best ones the best one maybe one teacher two teacher are there who always get this award and that really boosted and same thing others also follow the system is almost same everywhere in all the schools okay because no, that's where you go there. what happens what is so nice about cough is these were happening but you see a larger outcome because you know i'm in level one now I'm reaching level two. Collectively, two, yes. we are reaching level three. That mm. is a new power that has come with the framework. And then the, because the kind of positive reiteration all of you were doing, that's how you were keeping mm -hmm. teachers motivated. Exactly. But they see a larger impact of their work. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that's the good part that's of the framework. Part of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, John, uh, one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, once again disturbing Please, you. sir. No, uh, no disturbing, sir. Please. Uh, there, there is a question over there. Somebody is asking, suppose if someone sends a fake report. Well, a lot of questions are there, but that question I particularly am taking if someone sends a fake report. Now, let me make it very clear to that particular gentleman who has asked this question. Let's see, education world is a complete different world. Remember, we are dealing with the children we are dealing with those people whom we want to make the future citizens. Now, from your own conscience, if you send a fake report, nothing will happen to CBSE. But ask your own self, are you doing the right thing? Are you doing the your parents, the other stakeholders are depending on you? They are thinking that I have sent my child to the best people who will take care. Now, in that case, if you send a fake report, Maybe the child will not lose too much. CBSC will not look, but what about your school? What about your own inner feeling? What about your conscience where you will stand? Please, for the sake, for God's sake, don't give any fake reports. Don't give it. If you are not, if you are not ready with the report, don't give a report. Write a report. I am not able to give it right now. I'll give it after 10 days, after 15 days, after one year. For, but for God's sake, please don't give any fake reports. If fake reports are there, nobody will lose. Only your school will lose it. This is my take on that also. Very rightly, a very, question there was. very rightly said, sir. Very well put. That's very well put. Sir, so thank you so much, sir. You have given a very uh, detailed insight. Actually, it all started with how we could enhance the quality of education. Payal ma'am has started with observation and feedback. And then we have slowly delved into how and what kind of strategies Vika, sir, has been implementing. And thereby we forward, we, we moved to you also, sir, Surajit, sir. Very well and neatly explained. As I can't believe there's so much of intellectual knowledge that is there. Of course, you all have been very experienced educationists over quite some time, over a lot, lot of time. But this is quite interesting. It's very insightful. And I'm very glad that we have about 550 attendees listening to it. And they are totally enlightened with the conversation I yeah. had. Thank you so much, sirs and ma'ams. And one last question to each one of you, dear panelists, before we end the session. What we'll start with, uh, we'll start with maybe Pile Ma'am. Pile Ma'am, we'll start with you. 
Ma'am, so the question is, this is the question I would like to hear from each one of you all because everyone has a different perspective and it is covering a different sphere of NEP and SCOF. So I would like to ask you, ma'am, first, ma'am, what advice would you offer in one line to educators regarding the implementation of these policies? Be honest, be innovative, and understand that there's no better profession than being a teacher. Because by being a teacher, you are giving back to society what society has given to you. So I think we are in one of the best professions after doctors or maybe before them because some teachers only made doctors. Beautiful, ma'am. Very nicely said. Very nicely said. Thank you so much. Vikas, sir, we'll go with you next, please. What advice would you offer in one line yeah. to education regarding implementation of these policies? Yes, sir. I would like to say to all the educators that uh, change will be coming, sir. Because this field is evolving very fast. So we have to embrace it with a positive spirit. And then we see definitely a good generation we will be preparing for the future. Well put, sir. Very nicely put. Very nicely put. Thank you so much, sir. Surajit, sir. Would really love to hear from you too. What is the uh, advice? Sir, I, yes. yes sir. I, I personally believe that one teacher is equivalent to 100 ordinary men and women. Very and nice. at the end of the day, the parents, they will not go to a politician, they will not go to a dada, they will not go to a baba, they will not go to a mata, they will only come to you, to the teachers. They will ask you, Madam, push to bataiye bache ke liye kya kare? Sir, so us some way so that my child goes in the right direction. So when this is the faith of the parents, so please don't go in the wrong direction. Be with the children, be with the parents, give them the best advice because they are looking towards you. You are the most important person in the society. You are the most valuable person. Children are looking towards you. They are imitating you. They are, for, they are following you. Please don't deprive them. Give them the best. Even for that, if you have, spent, have to spend another half an hour, spend it. Nothing will happen. You will not lose everything, but you will gain, gain, and you will gain. This is my take. Very nicely said, sir. That's very right. Teachers are really important, not only in the realm of education, but also in the overall... In the of life. Yes, sir. Overall development of the children. Thank you so much, sir. Poonam, ma'am, I would like to ask you, ma'am, please, uh, what so is the advice? Uh, from? Now that the, the, um, uh, the hero of the story is the teacher, uh, my, my point is that success today or of uh, NEP's implementation or SCOF is uh, on two T's. One is teacher and technology. And then if both of them make friends with each other, there's no stopping. Very nice. Sure. Uh, Man, we just got a request. Uh, somebody with the name Rashmi Bhargava has a question. It's quite an interesting question she has. Uh, team, may I please request you to kindly unmute Miss Rashmi Bhargava. She has a question on SQAAF. Scoff. We'll just unmute her, please. Uh, Namaskar, sir. No, hello, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Please. Good evening, sir. It was regarding scope working. Actually, we were too much into it. And there were certain domains. There are seven domains into it, which has a uh, be it human resource, be it management governance or some other thing. Uh, there's a lot of what I found is there's a lot of documentation involved into it. And I think we need to be very concrete with certain documents. So my question to the panelists were like, how do we maintain it? Like, is, is it necessary to maintain proofs and evidence for every question that is asked in all the domains? Would somebody like to answer that? Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, Vikas, sir, please, please, sir, please. Yeah, as uh, <laughs> ma'am has asked, actually, it's, it's a lot of tedious work about the documentation. But what I would like to say to ma'am is it is it is pretty much required. Because when we talk about policy, so it is required because in policy, we are documenting what we will be doing. Suppose if the management people are not there, because everywhere management people cannot be there in all the domains. So once the policy has been set, you know that how, what you will be doing. Already standard operating procedures are done for you. So that is why documentation is required. And 
even in the scope document also it is written there are domains which are overlapping there are few things uh, so same proof can be for the various domains you need to prepare separate separate proof for separate separate domains there are few domains which are overlapping to each other so similar proof can work for the uh, regard like uh, which are similar type of sub domain so that proof can work this is from my absolutely, side absolutely sir thank you so much yeah, thank you very confirming we, though we were working in a very concrete manner but just wanted to have a light on it so thank yeah. you yeah thank you Thank you so much, sir, for very detailedly explaining that. That's very nice. Um, so, just okay. So, attendees, are you interested to? Are you interested in exploring our solutions to align our school strategies with SQAA and NEP requirements? Didn't sorry. get you. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. This, this You're just... asking the attendees, right? Yes, I'm asking. I'm asking the panelists, ma'am. I'm sorry. It was. I thought it was a question from the uh, attendee. I'm sorry. It's to the panelists. Are you interested in exploring our solutions to align your solutions, your school strategies with SCOF and NEP requirements? This is to the panelists. Ah, uh, definitely. Why not? Yes. Uh... That yes. is the, what is that is what we all require. No, we need help from each other. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes I help you, sometimes you'll help me, sometimes I'll learn from you, sometimes you'll learn from me. That's what education is all about. Uh, and uh, that is the time. purpose of this conversation, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, because yes, all yes. Of holding each other. Yeah, and this is just we are bringing all of you together. Exactly. After this discussion, everybody should reach out. Mm -hmm. Because uh, why should we reinvent the wheel if we found a better way of doing something? Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Correct. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, dear panelists, sirs, ma'am, Spoonam, ma'am, everyone, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you thank for you. all your support, for your valuable insights. We extend our gratitude to our engaged audience as well for their participation and contributions. I would request the host to kindly please take a picture of us, of us all, please. We would just smile <laughs> nicely so that they can take a nice picture for us. I think it will go in three, two, and one. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Before we close this session, it was a resplendent session we had. Before we close this session, I just want to quickly reiterate on what my learnings and what we discussed so far. So we have discussed the framework impact of SQOF and NEP in detail, emphasizing their profound impact on shaping school education standards and practices. We've also seen about school implementation. We have discussed the insights which were shared on how the school has integrated SQOF into its education practices, highlighting improvements in standards and outcomes. We also have seen how the conversation has delved into how NEP 2020. There, there's a question. No, yes. no, continue. This is for the audience. You okay. Can... Yes. How NEP 2020 has influenced the school's curriculum and teaching methodologies fostering innovation and alignment with contemporary educational needs. We've also spoken about educator empowerment where we discuss strategies for empowering educators, especially uh, Vikas sir, and also uh, Surajit sir were mentioning, to drive positive change in line with SQOF and NEP objectives, Emphas emphasizing also the pivotal role of educators in educational transformation. Thank you so much, sirs and ma'ams. It was a wealth of knowledge that was revealed to us. You all have unraveled to us. So thank you so much. Puna ma'am, would you like to add something to this ma'am? The only thing, again, I would like to reiterate, embrace technology holistically, like an ecosystem, not piecemeal. If you want the success of SCOF, all the stakeholders should be uh, connected. The assessments and assurance should be embedded, at least at the curriculum level. And that has to go on an auto for you to be able to take the big bite that scoff is. So, so it, for that, I think embrace technology, be brave in embracing technology.
that's very important thank you thank you ma'am for a very well rounded thank conclusion you. it's very well nicely said in a nutshell thank you so much ma'am so with this we have come to the end of the session we would like to thank everyone each one of you especially surajit sir vikas vasish sir payal ma'am puna ma'am thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights and especially also the audience who have been very interactive they've been asking many questions sorry we could not answer a few but definitely please write to us we would definitely email you so dear everyone stay tuned on our website uh, it's www.extramarks.com/em-elevate i would repeat www.extramarks.com/em-elevate for the recording of this webinar and details on our upcoming sessions we value thank your feedback you, for a very good thank you john for very good uh, you have moderated it very well yes exactly so much. That's thank it. you so much sir mm -hmm. and Max. thank you so much for the appreciation really thank you and thank you john. yes thank you thank you sir and ma'am thank you john you are an excellent or you are an excellent orator and a moderator <laughs> okay i like this style very much. <laughs> that's so kind uh, of could be very interesting yeah. though we did not give him a chance to moderate <laughs> <laughs> no not at all ma'am thank you so much it was it's really a nice uh, appreciation you have given thank you so much thank, thank you, you. and so it's like for having this type of platform where people can come and audience can be so we are thankful to extra max also for bringing us to this palace yes. thank giving you. us the chance to be with you all yeah that's true thanks extra max you're welcome